Welcome back, nerds, to the All Things Nerd Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Jake. And I'm Chad. This week, we are sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. We are also sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. Uh, this week, we are going to cover uh, a ton of, unfortunately for us and for you guys, uh, but unfortunately for our time span on these episodes we have a <laughs> lot of shit to cover uh this week um there are a lot of things happening in the nerd world right now um some of those things are um stranger things um and the boys as well as uh obi-wan kenobi and uh miss marvel so we're gonna talk about all of those so let's not waste any more time and let's get into this this is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Nerd. Welcome back, friends, to the All Things Nerd Podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Uh, Chad, how's your week been, my guy? Oh, so not great, Cotton. <laughs> uh, you know, I... Uh... I contracted the COVID. HIV, well, yeah. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> that one's still out. Um, I'm hoping not, but we'll see. Uh, no, I did, uh, I tested positive for COVID on, well, I did like the at-home like rapid test Monday morning. Felt like trash. Made me feel even worse because I was at your house the day before. We escaped it somehow. Well, it's probably because... Uh, you were also vaccinated, mm-hmm. but I somehow got it. Yeah, beat the living piss out of me. Yeah, only for a few days though, instead of like a few weeks. So yeah. I consider myself lucky there. It's because I'm vaccinated. Go get that vaccinated. Would be, that would be the wonders of vaccination. Yeah, um, but it still sucked. Uh, it was not mm-hmm. fun. Uh, but feeling better. I still have a cough. Uh, that's really that and like headaches and if I get slightly warm or slightly cold, I still will like start to sweat regardless. It's really hard to like maintain a comfortable, uh, temperature, but like other than that, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, it's been, you know, about a week. So, yeah. And I can see like. You obviously got out and saw Top Gun 2. <laughs> I have not seen <laughs> Top Gun 2. Uh, uh, for those of you who cannot see this, Chad has a very Miles Teller um, mustache. Conveniently after everybody got a Miles Teller mustache. Well, I haven't seen the movie yet, but it's so freaking hot in my apartment Oh, I thought you were going to say Miles Teller was so freaking hot. And I was like, yeah. Well, I mean, you're not wrong. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no, my apartment's just on fire. Uh, I have an air conditioner. I don't have central air, so I have an air conditioner in my bedroom and in my living room. Both Mm -hmm. of them are running with, like, the temperature set to, like, between 66 and 68. Today, my apartment did not get colder. (laughs) I say that very loosely. Uh, Colder than 79 degrees. Oof, you should have set it to 69. Uh, that's a little bit too warm based on the fact that it's still not working. Uh, but, I mean, I mean, 69 is pretty great. Like, It's a great also, number. I mean, this is episode 69. <laughs> nice. I, 69 is uh, pretty great. Yeah, sorry, Mom. 69 is not great. You have a butthole in both of your noses. Yeah, but some people like that. I mean, just... Gross. Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Gross. Sorry, Mom. If you've never seen South Park, that seems really gratuitous and nasty, but it's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's disgusting. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what about, uh, you? I mean, with your frozen house. I mean, it is uncomfortably cold. It, it, the rest of the house is fantastic. 
the basement is uncomfortably cold. I'm very cold right now. My toes are freezing. Sorry. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, my week's been a little hard. Um, my dog got hurt, as you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, a, a while ago. Uh, she's a tripod. She's only got one back leg at the moment, and she injured that back leg, and she has not been able to get up um, and do anything. So I literally have to carry her outside hold her up while she goes to the bathroom carry her back inside our vet appointment is tomorrow which for you guys will be come monday I, yeah yeah it, so tomorrow monday is the vet appointment and we're got to figure out what the plan is um so hopefully fingers crossed good news yeah try, trying to figure it out but yeah it's very sad seeing her like this but other than that things have been okay yeah and in the world of nerd I mean, we're not going to get into it because there's really we no don't know details anything about it yeah. except for it's been <laughs> announced. Uh, we're getting a Jon Snow sequel slash spinoff of Game of Thrones. Yeah, with Kit Harington reprising his role at obviously as Jon Snow. You couldn't do it without him. That would just be dumb. Unless they jumped decades to where he's an old man, but like that Who also doesn't sound that? fun. Yeah. 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 No, uh, this could be good. I think we need to see how the House of Dragons plays out. Because if that's garbage, then I don't have high hopes for... Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, at least with these spinoffs, it's just kind of going off of, like, source material in conversations with George R. R. Martin. Yeah, oh of... god. He hasn't even written the sequels yet for he hasn't even finished uh, He whatever. hasn't Don't finished the the George Game of R. Thrones. George R. R. Martin can go George R. R. fuck off. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> Thanks for giving us what like three books and then he just fucked off and hasn't done anything since then. I think the sixth book came out. Yeah. Or the fifth book, because then how many seasons of Game of Thrones were there? Were th- was there was seven, eight, seven or eight, seven or eight, seven or eight. Yeah. Oh yeah, eight. The, and then the last season was just really short but yeah, long episodes, it, and yeah. it was based off of what the seventh book would be was supposed to be, but he didn't finish the book yet, so yeah, they just he, winged it. He released the sixth book like a year after the sixth season came out, and then they just like. Completely different things at this point in time. Yeah. He's Which, flat. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Clearly, but that, Clear, that's a thing. Yeah. Clearly, we're not over it. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. Anyways. No, we're not. Uh, but we don't want to waste a lot of time because we do have a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and talk about our first sponsor, uh, which is Ray's Energy Drinks. It's... Uh, Pickled habanero and garlic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, fantastic it's still, energy it's, drink. It's still funny. It's still funny. <laughs> it's still funny. <laughs> no, but they are great energy drinks. Uh, zero calories, zero sugar, zero crash. Uh, just great flavors and so much more than just energy drinks if that's not your thing. I mean, they're also hot sauce. I mean, you can pour it on anything. <laughs> yeah. just, maybe, uh, maybe that'll be our thing is that we get them to collab together. Ooh. And make a spicy raise energy, Craig. <laughs> spicy energy. You, you hear a, that, Craig? The, ti- the title is a work in progress. <laughs> Cry baby raise. Ooh. It's like sweet yeah, baby raise. Yeah. But energy drink and spicy. Mm, Anyways, for your... <laughs> listen up. Learn how to save 15% on your order, and we'll be right back with you to talk more about all of the nerd shit. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their refresh formula technology, 
Raise Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Raise Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout for 15% off your order. Or if you don't know what you want, go ahead and click the link that's in the description for, to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. All right, you nerds. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the Disney Plus shows that are out now, uh, specifically Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm. First off, spoiler warning. If you haven't watched Obi-Wan Kenobi, really anything that we're going to be talking about, once we get to that specific show... Pause, watch it, come back. Yeah. But we're starting with Obi-Wan Kenobi, so you've got three seconds, two, one. You've been warned. Yeah, your fault now. Uh, this episode is really great. They've all been pretty great. I love this show. I think, so with, uh, the, normally we cover like two shows. Right now there's just so much nerd stuff out that we're kind of trying to cover Four, four shows in this episode. Yeah. Sorry. Three, okay, like three, three weekly episodes and an entire season yeah. of another show. But yeah. So we're going to, we're going to kind of fly through these a little bit, but, uh, what I mean, sister two, we find out right, uh, not right away, but we find out that sister two is, uh, she was a youngling. Uh, one of the younglings that Anakin slash Darth Vader, uh, slaughtered when <laughs> he Whoa. was, Killing young to. Jedi's, yeah. yeah. Ob- he, obviously, he failed with her, but yeah, slaughter because she, play, she played, literally dead. played dead. Yeah, yeah, and we watched all of her friends uh, just get murdered by Anakin Skywalker. And if you remember the scene in, was it the third one? Yeah, had to Revenge have been the third of the one. Sith. Yeah, he uh, goes into a room, and there's a bunch of little kids in there. And I mean, he just, just like, marches through the temple. Yeah, but the one of the things that they focused on in the movie was him going into the the mm. the youngling pre Padawan stage yeah room and just mercs them all. Master Skywalker, there's too many of them. What are we gonna do? Yeah. It like <laughs> just kills them all. Trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> emotional trauma. Emotional <laughs> damage. I was gonna say, wow, way <laughs> to fuck that one up, friend. Uh yeah. It Give is your balls so we find out that uh, sister two, who everyone has been hating on, and she's which doing is dumb. such a great job. I yeah. like, and, I, I, and I now hate... you like her. Now her character is likable. You're like, oh shit, she's a good guy. I mean, you know? I hate like... the character because she's just so cold hearted. Yeah, but, but the, only she for portrays her personal... it so well. <laughs> I was gonna say, but only for her personal gain, she's fine. Yeah. Just, you can be a you can be a dick if it's for yourself, right? Sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, if it that is, makes uh... you sleep better. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. Like uh... a youngling pre order sixty six. <laughs> no, you so you good. really do. You really do. Uh, kind of start to like her now in this episode because you find out that she's not. You understand she's her not, motives. Yeah, she's hunting. Vader. She's not. She's trying to get close to Vader because she wants to kill Vader for yeah. killing all of her friends when she was a kid. Yeah, it's it's a nice little twist, and know, it's nice a really twist. great moment. And we'll yeah. we'll get to that in a second. But there's a really where because now Obi Wan has kind of opened himself back up to the Force, mm-hmm. and he goes to confront <clears throat> uh, Sister Two or Reva. Uh, and like is sensing her pain and her 
everything, just her history through a, a blast door. And it's like, mm. you were you were there. Like, this is why you're doing it. It, it also just, the entire episode just shows how powerful Obi-Wan really is when he's not closing himself off to the Force because yeah. of his own personal trauma. Yeah, when he's not being a baby, he can do cool stuff still. He's a badass. Yeah. But uh, we also get flashbacks uh, to mm-hmm. Obi-Wan training Anakin. Yeah. It, so and we, other... we get to see... Hayden Christensen, not to cut yeah. you off, but we get to see well, Hayden no, no, Christensen. No, no, I was, I was as literally going to say that. Yeah. yeah, we had we saw Hayden Christensen in the at the end of the first episode in like heavy like makeup garb, so you could barely tell it was him as Darth Vader, but yeah. it was uh, Hayden Christensen. Uh, so up until now, this past episode, you, we finally get to see Hayden Christensen. Uh, as he's the one know. under the actual armor, though. Like Hayden I Christensen know, yeah, is actually fucking. But this tall. is the first time you get to see like him, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. They and do it's like, de-age yeah, him a bit. They tried well, a bit. They they tried. They, tried. they didn't want to like overdo it, like what they did with uh, Luke Skywalker and uh, no. Book of Boba Fett. I thought that that was so good, though. They did such a good job in that. They well, should have done that. It's because they used a, a body double and then de aged and kind of like masked his face. This is a post production thing. But for this, I mean, they still de aged Anakin a little bit. You know, Tori. He looks younger than what he is, but you can definitely tell that he's older than like the 19, 20 year old self that he's trying to portray. Yeah. He looks like maybe like. A forty-year-old trying to. I would say he looks like he's twenty-year-old. They they made him look like he was like thirty-ish. He he looks like our age. Fair, but rough, but it, fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still great to see Hayden Christensen back as yeah, fantastic. actual like apprentice Padawan Anakin, yeah. and not just behind the mask. <clears throat> being the body double because obviously it's James Earl Jones's voice reprising the role of mm-hmm. Darth Vader. So like he's literally just been a body double for most of the show. Yeah. So it is really cool to actually get to see Hayden Christensen. Mhm. Mhm. We could as talk about it for like yeah. 20 minutes yeah. but we can't. But we can't. We can't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we but could because of those flashbacks, can. and they happen throughout the episode. We we do learn that Obi Wan. It's the flashbacks have a purpose. Mm-hmm. It's a training exercise that he did with Anakin that he did not retain as an actual lesson. Yeah, and it's just Obi Wan just proving time and time again that on top of being a skilled Jedi, he's a great uh, strategist. He's smart. He understands. He thinks good. He he, y'all. He don't think good, and like do things good too. Yeah, it it actually is cool because uh, on on one hand, like you're saying, they show that uh, Obi Wan is very intellectual, and but on the other hand, they show that Anakin is very rageful, and, and, and in the prideful. flashback, he he even says like, "Hey, man, like." Your, and I'm gonna I'm gonna douche this up a little bit because you know that's what I do. But he's like, Ugh. "Hey man, hey man, you can't uh, attack from rage. You gotta it, you you can't fight out of anger. You have to fight out of peace. You don't want to kill anybody. You just want you know." And Anakin's like, "Oh, only if you lose, like blah blah blah," and does some douchey shit. And Obi Wan's like, mm, "Now I took your lightsaber and I could kill you." And, yeah, because Anakin well, literally disarms him during like their sparring yeah. session their training yeah. session and and he's like stand down i beat you and obi-wan's like you haven't beaten me like there's more ways to fight <laughs> damn than, it than damn without it. a weapon i was gonna do it i forgot how to do it i forgot the wording for it but right when you said that i was gonna be like from batman begins you haven't beaten me you've sacrificed your your footing, footing. For, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then he just taps the ice and Batman just falls through the ice. <laughs> right. Literally the same scene. It's 
it gives off the same energy, 100%. I mean, he literally says that and then just, like, takes Anakin's lightsaber from him. And it was like, yeah. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, now you'll remain a Padawan until I say so. And then he, like, yeah. gives him one of these on the shoulder and walks yeah. away. It's like a, when Good if you ever sport. had a, Yeah. If you ever had a stepdad and they, like, didn't really like you that much and they just like tap you on the shoulder that's kind of what it was i've had one of those <laughs> I, I also I had one for my real dad it was great <laughs> happy father's day everyone by the way <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> holy shit <laughs> 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 it's funny because it's true and it's yeah uh... anyways you know the the, it's last, sad. the last the last dad to consistently tell me that they love me is actually your dad and your dad he, tells he's me not that he lying. loves you every, t- every time we talk to your dad he tells me he loves me when we're yeah. done talking he's like love you Jake and I'm just like I love you too randall he he means it too uh, which is what's great the first time he said it it like blew me away i was he's because he said i love you to you and i was like oh that's cute you know in my head and he's like love you too jake and i was like a dad said that to me it felt real (laughs) real emotions hmm what do i do here i love you dad <laughs> oh, we might have to make merch for that. Just like, I love you, Dad. You know which dad you are. <laughs> oh, uh, man. <laughs> but, like, we. Fuck. Uh, like, what we mentioned, though, is. Uh, to, to get off of that very real uh, parental. Uh, we've used this word a lot. This might be the theme of this episode is trauma. Uh, trauma. But to get past that, uh, you know, with the whole Obi-Wan confronting the second sister, calling her out basically for her true motives, mm-hmm. uh, even offers to, like, work with her to take down Vader. Uh, we do get a really cool fight uh, between... It's cool. On, it it's cool. cool. It's cool on it was Vader's cool. It part. Was cool. yeah. It wasn't yes, yes. equal. At she all. didn't. She didn't do great. No. She tried. She tried, and it it was is visually that the, stunning. Is that the blue blue or green ribbon? Is the participation ribbon? I think it just depends on what uh, yeah. community center sport you're playing. It was cute. She tried. But she does try and fight Vader because obviously Obi Wan and the the new rebellion mm-hmm. uh, escape. Yeah, and Vader. I mean, as they're trying, they're, a ship tries to take off, and we see Vader use the Force and just mm-hmm. crush the ship, yeah. throw it to the ground, and then as he is ripping the ship apart with the force we realize that the ship is empty and he's confused and then the other ship flies off and escapes and this has this has Obi-Wan Leia uh, it was cool but like why what stopped Vader from just stopping that ship and doing the same thing distraction more than anything I would assume I guess I mean it's not the most soundproof explanation but because like when he first comes in there the ship is like taking off and he like stops it and is like bam and then he's like what the fuck is going on and then the other ship takes off and he's just like oh no what was to stop him from but that ship took off so much faster that I think that I don't think that they showed it but yeah. my guess is that it took off from within the atmosphere at mm. light speed. Also, side note, uh, I was super hammered last night when I came home. Uh, you know this. 
Mm-hmm. And but uh, when we got to the house, I was like, I Nicole drove because she doesn't drink, and uh, <clears throat> I was very drunk, and she opened the garage door, and I literally went. <laughs> Like st- outside of the car, standing in front of the garage door, I was just That's like pretending so I was. Just- <laughs> I say that mockingly, but do you know how many times as I'm going into like Target or any place with, but I do it like waist level. <laughs> Nobody sees it. <laughs> yeah, I see. So you gotta do it visible. People gotta see it. It's way funnier. It is way funnier, but. I always, like, way more than I should as a grown adult. I'm just like, meh. I didn't think Mm. she realized what I was doing, and then today she mentioned it um, in front of people. And she's like, (laughs) and I was like, oh, fuck, I did do that, yeah. (laughs) But anyways, (laughs) so... As that second ship gets away, uh, the second sister, uh, Rava, she attacks Vader. And, I mean, Vader definitely wins. She swings her lightsaber, and he's just using the Force to block it, not even using his lightsaber for Literally, if you've seen the Matrix, the first Matrix movie, when Neo finally becomes the one, and he fights Agent Smith with, like, one hand, it's literally that fight. He just I don't bodies think he her. doesn't use his lightsaber once, but when she he gets her lightsaber, snaps it in half, and well, then that was throws the cool part, half of it back to her. At first, she only uses one side of the lightsaber while she's attacking him, and then she opens up the other side like a Darth Maul kind of lightsaber where it's double-ended, it's double-sided, if you will. Uh, <laughs> and it also has like a spin feature on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those EDM lights where you just press the button and it spins and like it's like. Mm, t- mm, t- mm, t- I was going dildo, but you know whatever. Oh yeah, that. Uh, we'll but, we'll get uh, to a, a very graphic dildo fight in a when, little bit. When he get when he gets annoyed with it, he takes it from her, breaks it in half, throws the other half to her, and is like, "Let's go." And it is yeah short lived. She gets yeah. irked. Yeah, he stabs her. Yeah. Leaves her to die. Red Rocket at her. Right in the guts. <laughs> right in the guts. Red Rocket. Red Rocket. <laughs> God it's is funny nuts because up in it's, her guts. It's, it's a red lightsaber. <laughs> nuts up in her guts. Gross. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, she picks up basically a communicator that was dropped by... Uh, I think his name is Hanjit uh, Kumail's character Kumail Nanjiani yeah I uh, think that it's Han Hanji Hanje nah. um his his character basically drops a communicator that Obi-Wan gave to him and has a message from Senator Organa being like if Vader finds out about the kids his next stop is going to be tattooing and then from there it shows uh kind of keeps switching back between obi-wan and like the child luke Mm -hmm. uh obi-wan's like sensing that he's in danger luke is sleeping and it kind of ends on that of obi-wan's very aware that there's going to be trouble Mm -hmm. that's kind of where the episode ends but he also kind of he kind of blows it off a little bit because he says like something's wrong and then um oh fucking a i forget who it is but somebody said like what are you talking about and he's like it's probably nothing and then they show luke like sleeping well i think that obi-wan is just trying to like play coy because he's already caused a lot of issues for these people uh you know to escape the empire and kind of force them into a rebellion I'm sure that we'll get into it. I mean, next week is the the finale. Or this week I, is the finale. It's so annoying I'm, that it's only six episodes. It I, I'm makes enjoying sense the because show the original thoroughly. trilogy was only six. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But it did get picked up for a second season, so I know. I'm excited yeah. for that as well. But we've spent way too much time talking about this, so let's move on to Miss. That Marvel. being said, oh, you fucking dick! I've drank so much of this. Miss Marvel, Woo, the other Disney one. I'm we'll fly through this show. one. We have to. I'm loving the show. Have, yeah. Yeah, it's great. So yeah. we'll we'll probably touch a little bit more just on like where we were right and wrong with our theories on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to fly through it. We got yeah. two. Other than this one, we have two more shows we got to talk about. We got it. What are we at for time right now? Oh, uh, we're at like thirty minutes. So we got. Oh, we got this. We got this. Yeah. Right off the bat, uh, her there's name's, a, a couple. her name is Miss Marvel. Um, Miss... <laughs> she's gonna. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kamala Khan. Uh, but what's really cool is so, I mean. The f- end of the first episode, she gets grounded, mm. gets in trouble with her parents. She does get permission yeah. to go to a, a party where she meets uh, another gentleman. That doesn't seem Kamran. like being grounded to me. No, but she <laughs> confronted her parents about it, and her mom's like, we get it, you're... Which is a really cool moment, because her mom is very strict the first episode, and she's like, I get it. You're You're sorry. You messed up. Let's give you a little bit more space you're growing up i just want to make sure you're doing the right things yeah. right <clears throat> but so she meets a guy named uh Kamran. uh but during her conversation with uh Kamran, not on when she first meets him at the party but later on they actually referenced the eternals which was a fun nod because the eternals kind of seems like it's not part of the yeah. mcu except for yeah. like references in that movie yeah, they do reference, like, the Avengers and stuff like that. But it was cool because all, well, part yeah. of it is because it's also the person they're referencing is also Kumail Nanjiani, yeah. who we were just talking about in the Obi-Wan. Uh, but, yeah, it's cool. Because they're it, both... Uh, <clears throat> sorry not to cut you off, but... Nope, yep. uh Like, uh, Miss Marvel... Oh, my God. Kamala Khan. Uh, she's... Uh, like a Pakistani immigrant, uh, mm. loves Bollywood, just the whole culture. So she's talking with Kamran, and they're talking about Bollywood and references uh, Kingo. Yeah. And Kingo Sr., which technically are well, the same person. But his person. name is not Kingo in. His name's Kingo at, to the Eternals, but his name is something else for his Bollywood name. No, it's still Kingo because they literally say it? Kingo, yeah. Oh, fuck. I, they just Whatever. give he just has like a family or Kingo is his family name and like yeah. each time he reintroduces himself as the next generation it's like a new yeah. like first name it's like name. his son of a son of a son yeah yeah so Kingo like, is like, your favorite yeah. yeah and he's like yeah my my mom loves Kingo senior which That's is was, supposed yeah. to be like his dad even though it's the same person and it's yeah. it's just a, a nice little nod and the the funny part of but it is for those of you, if if any of you haven't seen Eternals, go watch it. But the funny part is Kumail plays uh, how he hides on Earth as an Eternal is as a Bollywood actor, and what he does is because he doesn't age, he plays the the great grandfather of himself, the great great grandfather of himself, and then grandfather of himself, father of himself, and uh, through the years he just like plays a younger version of himself that looks and they say that in uh <clears throat> excuse me and miss marvel yeah how he looks she's the like, same they they look exactly alike <laughs> yes yeah. because they're the same fucking person yeah just it's, one of them has like a mustache and one of them doesn't yeah. but it's just kingo the yeah. eternal just being a bollywood actor yeah creating his own like false legacy of never aging <laughs> One of the, I think one of the cooler things in this episode uh, is one, we get kind of like a montage, like a almost like a Spider Man esque, early Spider Man esque. Push it to montage, the limit. Yeah, of her learning how to use her powers, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, it was cool. But and it her, is you know, she, very she's got her, like got, she's said. got her guy in the chair. He's like, oh, you Bruno. should try this. And yeah, I mean, yeah. we don't talk about Bruno, but. <laughs> nope, you don't. <laughs> Sorry, that's no, a bad no, joke. no. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no. Yeah, I love that song. So, anyways, but uh, <laughs> but through that montage, uh, we find out that your theory that we talked about last week is 
true to a to a degree we don't have all of the details uh given to us yet but like you said her powers aren't coming from the bangles it's it unlocked her powers Mm -hmm. which kind of gives us that in a uh, kind of a sideways way where the inhumans had to have or like x-men or inhumans in general uh, mutants have to have their power unlocked also we see that in deadpool um you have to unlock their ab- ability it's not just yeah. you know the gene the genome is in them but you have to unlock it to be able to use it um yeah. so this was kind of cool because it did give us something that we are worried they weren't going to give us cuz chad has mentioned his outrage about like she's not inhuman this is bullshit like yeah, blah, blah, blah. because it's not her like body and skin stretching for the ability yeah, yeah. But, but they the did it in a more not realistic because obviously it's not realistic i mean but... round it's a roundabout <clears throat> way of pleasing the fact that it's from space it's a cosmic energy but mm-hmm. also she had the ability or not the ability, but the genome to create the power. Yeah. And w- we might see where, when the bangle is no longer attached to her, that she still yeah. has the power, and then it's coming from her body just with, actually yeah, stretching her, instead yeah. of, like, pushing out this cosmic <clears throat> energy. We don't yeah. know much more beyond that, but we do see uh, the Department of Damage Control is now... Mm-hmm really trying to like hunt her yeah yep and uh uh, she gets flashes of like her great grandmother that supposedly well at one point it is her great grandmother but there's a second part where this is where you and i disagree but i also watched it and i was you know wrong uh, Drugged up on cough medicine because <laughs> it was during my COVID week. But uh, you pointed this out, so go ahead and the the second yeah. vision that well, she gets. So the the cool part about it, we finally get to see her not be in a panicky like the first episode. She's kind of like panicking. She doesn't really know how to use her powers. Now she's been like fucking with it a little bit, and she like knows how to use it a little bit. <laughs> Uh, a kid like falls out of a window and she's like, I'm going to, you know, I got you kid. Like, hold on. And she catches him as he's falling, but then she gets distracted by a vision of a female who Chad thinks or thought, I don't know where you stand on it now. Uh, I, I that need it, to go back and rewatch it after you pointed this out. I haven't unfortunately, but he thinks it's her grandmother, uh, in vision or, or like, I don't what do you, what do I say? Manifesting herself to Kamala, and in this moment, Kamala drops the kid. She does catch him again, uh, but not without injury. He hits the top of a car, screams at his ankle is like broken. Uh, so I'm, I'll get to that in a minute. But um, <clears throat> actually, I should get to that now because the other part is after. Yeah, a little uh, bit more. Yeah. <laughs> so the kid. So the, I think uh, on one hand, I think the everybody was videotaping it um, on their phones. So I think people are going to kind of start turning on her uh, the way that Spider-Man. people do with Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. I think that uh, she's going to feel that negative effect. If it's of not a, a super clean save, people yeah, are going to hate then, on her for it. Yeah. But at the end of the episode, um, her boyfriend or whatever he is. Uh, Comron, the... They, they went out up. on, like, a date or whatever, but she's... Yeah. But we do see her run from the Department of Damage Control first. Yeah, yeah. And she's using her powers, which is dope. She's, like, jumping off of, like, lights and, like, going over the cops, and yeah. it was cool. And they're, like, shooting at her and stuff, and she gets in her dude's car. Uh, but the girl in the back, when she turns around, there's a lady in the back seat, which I assume is his mom? Yeah, Maybe? that's what he says, like, meet my mother. But she, in in my opinion, from what I saw, she's the person who manifested herself to Kamala, not her grandmother. Um, 
And so, and that's where the episode ended. So we don't know. Right. And there's not an end credit scene on this episode. There nope. was on the first one, but that was just to introduce the Department of Damage Control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or not introduce, but like show that they're a part of it. I'm not sure that that's who that was. I'll have to rewatch it. And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll admit it next week same. as well. Yeah. Same, 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 same. This episode um, was really great, though. Yeah, it was it, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. I th- I, it is a, quite a ramp up from the first episode. It took till the end of it, but I think I see. I can kind of like see where it's going. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, it's getting there. Um, but we also have two more shows to talk about, so we're gonna yeah. move on here. Um, that being said, cheers. Well, <clears throat> that's the end of this one. So during that sponsor break, I'm gonna refill. We're going to go into sponsor number two, which is Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. It is a zero calorie, zero sugar, zero crash. Uh, <laughs> Hot sauce. Uh, it'll never not be funny, okay, guys? Uh, <laughs> it's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> you should, like, play that, like, in the corner of like, the Syrian, like, going put it but, right, anyways. right between it. Yeah. <laughs> it's still uh, funny. Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce. It goes on practically anything, especially uh, plant-based Raisin ranch, energy. plant-based ranch and pizza. It's delicious. Oh, so good. Aww. Aww. Anyways, check it out, and we will tell you a little bit more about it if you listen up. Hey, you nerds! Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those. Our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. All right, friends. Um, something that we, it's a huge nerd thing, and we have not really talked about it too much. Um, and we really should because, as you can see, if you look at Chad's screen there, uh, the black and white bottom, there you go. Yes. I also have one. It's Mine's not black of, and white. You just can't see it, colors. No, the here. frame is black and white. Sorry. Oh, that's what I meant. Though. Right. And and mine is out of frame, unfortunately, but it's right above this picture of Michael Rosenbaum, autographed, by the way. Um, but yeah, we <laughs> the best we we met we met uh, David Harbor, who plays Hopper in Stranger Things. So we're gonna talk show. about Stranger Things. Uh, before we start, spoiler alert, and also because we haven't talked about this show at all, uh, we're gonna fly through this entire. Um, was it seven episodes? Seven episodes season? Yeah. Or part part one of season four or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, I guess the first thing, uh, at the end of the last season, Hopper, uh, David Harbour, dies or seemingly dies. He kind of disappears or disintegrates. Uh, but he is alive. Yeah fan and how they go about doing it was i mean he basically just threw yeeted if you will uh himself <laughs> off of a ledge to not die yeah um <clears throat> but yeah he is still alive and now he's a captive of mother russia uh in the 80s so before the fall of the soviet union yeah and uh Sorry. he's basically the crimson dynamo <laughs> Just kidding. It's Red Guardian, I know. Yeah. No, it's really cool. Um, there's some... We- there's a couple... I, I don't want to get too much into it, because we really do have to fly through this. But yeah. uh, there's some weird parts, like the parts where he like breaks both of his ankles to get out of his shackles, and then but walks. then like runs from people. And I was too. like, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I um, think he... I I think that they basically just he used the shackles to like break the skin on top of his foot so he could like be gross about slipping it off but either Stop. way that's not how it works. Um 
But also, but, like, throughout this entire series, anytime the police are involved, like, they definitely do not follow the law uh, or police protocol. Like, detaining kids, getting confessions mm. without, like, a legal guardian or a lawyer. It is the you know, 80s. Whatever. I know. It is the 80s. Great uh, show, though. Um, I do. I have, uh, and I share this with every teenage girl watching this show. Uh <laughs> Steve the Hare Harrington. Oh, I love this kid. He's so great. <laughs> He's so He's good. my favorite character. <laughs> He's my favorite character. He's th- my favorite character. No. You pick a different favorite character. Yours can be like Can I can it be the bloody and broken version of Steve? From like no. the end of every season? <laughs> no. No. Winona Ryder, just kidding. Her character is so annoying. Don't in the don't worst. be silly. No, but no, I don't think her character is annoying. I like Winona. I love Winona Ryder. Oh, okay. But I think that her character. I think I think I that think, Joyce is just okay. A, in in the earlier seasons, yes, she, she was, was a, a very terrible neurotic, helicopter parent. But 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 she was right season. the entire time. She was. And I really like her in this season. Like, we're getting off topic. She is a little bit more bad. Sorry, guys. But, yeah, when they're flying with the Russian dude, and she's literally like, oh, he can't hear us. And she's, like, sawing fucking dudes, like, handcuffs off or whatever. And the guy turns around and looks at them, and she's just like, (laughs) it's so funny. I I love Joyce this season. She's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. She's also, also been it's cool that a lot, huh? She's been through a lot. Oh yeah, she's probably and been through a... the most compared to L. And there's like a nice. This is way off topic. We do not have this written down. I'm so sorry. But there's a very nice tie-in to the first season, uh, because actually, you know what? I'm gonna wait on that because we have it. We do have part of that written down. Sorry. Okay. Um, Steve is the best, and. But what's your theory uh, so, about Steve? Huh? What's your theory about Steve? He's going to die. You he's going to die. You think he's finally going to kick it? I think... Here's the thing. Steve the Hare Harrington. I'm going to call him by his full name every time. <laughs> Steve the Hare Harrington. Because uh, he's got fantastic hair. Love you, kid. I'm jealous. Yeah. Um, I'm balding. He has... First of all, they were going to kill him in the first season. Uh, but they loved him so much uh, that they kept him around. And I'm glad that they did. But he is, uh, he even says it in the in this season. He's like, why am I always the one babysitting? Why am I always the one doing this? When he dives into the water, he's like, no one else is going to do it. I'll do it. Like, he's like, mm-hmm. he literally is like the person who is putting himself out there in like the most danger to protect everybody else and I he can even wield with, Mjolnir or Jonathan yeah, yeah. and like the Which the last crazy. season season 3 when he fights Billy you know like he gets his ass kicked and Billy goes inside to like and like slams uh, Lucas up against the wall uh, Steve comes in and he's like I got this gets the piss beat out of him but he always 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 puts himself out there yeah and and I just think that that's unfortunately gonna bite him in the ass, and I think he's I think he's gonna die at in, the end of this. Yeah, yeah. They the 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 cast and crew have said publicly that do not get attached to at least two characters in the second part of season four. They're gonna die, and I think and it's, he's that's only two episodes. For the second part, and that comes out July 1st. Yeah. I think he's going to be one of them. There's some theories, and again, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, fuck off, come back later. But he... Want, there's a few things that got mentioned. Uh, well, one, he's getting, like, eaten alive by those pterodactyl, mini pterodactyl They're things. parademons, if you're yeah. familiar with Darkseid. <laughs> From the they DC like, universe. Yeah. Liter- I literally thought 
they're bats out of hell. He, if you I will. thought he was going to die in that episode. I was like, no, <laughs> no. But yeah. They're eating it. They're ripping chunks of his flesh off. I mean, like they're eating him alive. Nancy <laughs> comes and saves him. And uh, <laughs> how do you really feel about Nancy? <laughs> I actually no, I, I never liked Nancy. You liked Nancy. Up I liked until, Nancy no. up until like this season. Yeah, because I thought that she was like Steve, like reluctantly thrown into this yeah. mix, and I, I appreciate how intelligent she is, and she brings that element of like mm. looking at it from like an intellectual perspective. But this but season, at, I think that she's a little annoying. Like I think at that the Robin's same time, also kind of stolen. But the at the spot, same like, time, know. she's like that rich kid who, like John Jonathan, kind of like I don't want to say puts her in her place, but like kind of like puts perspective onto it. Yeah, where she because because she gets fired from her job, and she's like, "They fired me because I'm a girl," and Jonathan's like, "No, they fired you because." We've only been working at this place for two months. You demanded all this bullshit. We're and interns. They, yeah, and then they were like, "Fuck this chick," and they fired you. Uh, we're interns. We're not even paid, and they fired you for like putting your nose where it shouldn't have been. You're like blah blah blah, and she's like, "Well, this is bullshit," and blah blah blah, and he's like, "No, it's not. This is typical of you because you grew up where your parents gave you everything." I had to work for this, and you just got me fired for my job. Yeah. Because, you know, like, so it's kind of, you know, I don't yeah. like, yeah. But anyways, Steve's going to die. I know it. Makes me sad. That does uh, make he me got, sad. He got tore up. They were literally eating him. Uh, there's also, they also go on to make a point uh, when he bit one of the things and, like, rips its, like, skin off and, like, spits his blood out. Uh, that could do something to him. Um, yeah, this is yeah. all taking place in the Upside Down during this attack. Yeah. yeah. The Upside so, Down is like the parallel universe. If we have to explain this to you, you should not be listening, because this is <laughs> season four. Yeah. But uh, on top of that, I mean, it did get picked up for a fifth season. Don't know yeah, where I didn't it's know that. Go. I thought it... I thought this was it. I thought this was the last season. I guess I was wrong. According, well, this is according to IMDb. There's going to yeah. be a fifth season. Nice. Um, so there's this wild theory out there, and if this is what actually happens, like we're going to be upset because uh, it kind of eliminates the importance of everything that's happened. Um, this is not my theory, but it's just something that I've heard and read. But if they do this, they can do it in a way that still makes sense for the show uh, without destroying everything. Um, the theory that I heard was that this is all just a, like flashbacks of like a D&D campaign. Because we know that would, Dungeons & Dragons has kind yeah. of been a running theme throughout. And now it's just like the all the kids are all grown up. They play D&D yeah. &D together because it's something that they bonded over. And, like, these things that have happened in their childhood, like the mall burning down, random people dying under mysterious circumstances, they incorporate that into their D&D &D campaign no. I would and be make so it fantastical. Pissed. That no. would be such a cop-out. I agree. I would but if they wanted to go with, like, an It Part 2 uh, where they're all adults and they come okay. back together after years... And Hawkins is still like cursed, and the Upside Down is still like causing an issue. Yeah. I would be okay with that because they do reference uh, Derry, which is the town from it in Stranger Things season two. two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With um, Sean Astin. Out here. Sean Astin. Yeah, he uh, he mentions to Samwise. Will. Yeah, yeah. Samwise the Brave. Uh, he mentions to Will. That where he's from, Derry, uh, that there was a clown that used to like haunt, haunt his dreams, which is a direct reference to Pennywise. It, it Pe Pennywise from mm -hmm. the It movies, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, I would be pissed if they fucking do that. I hope um, they don't. I hope that that theory is wrong. But I would be okay with kind of like an It 
part two ask with like it would grown ups be cool coming but I, I think i i want to see here's the thing if they if they do that i want to see the i still want to see the kids that are playing the roles i don't yeah. want it to be different actors yeah i would say like you know five five to ten years from yeah. now like in the timeline where they're like college recently graduated yeah. from college it's cause... gonna be it's gonna be really hard for them to hide lucas as and like make him a kid because this season he is just a full-grown man yeah he's just got like huge also, muscles like, millie bobby brown is no they even tried to de-age her in this season for like small yeah. parts and it looks nothing like her anymore well no no the girl who plays like the younger version of her yeah that's a different person. They, they, there's a girl who plays her, well, but they use her face. Yeah. Yeah, but like, we met Millie Bobby Brown when she was eleven, yeah. like yeah. eleven years old, eleven or mm-hmm. twelve, as a child in this show. Yeah. So, just work with it. You know. Yeah. If you have to jump ahead in the timeline, that's. No one's going to be mad about that. It doesn't have to be like every six to eight months that a new tragedy happens. Yeah. They can move on with their lives and then another tragedy happens and they, that forces them back together because they are very good at writing three or four storylines and then they merge. Mm-hmm. Keep that um, going. Just like jump ahead in time so it makes sense for the age of the actors. Last thing before we jump into our last nerd thing is I didn't know I didn't know this right away and you didn't either we talked about this mm-hmm. uh but the girl who plays Robin uh and she is Steve's kind of counterpart from season 3 um yeah uh she plays uh a lesbian I don't know if that's the right vernacular to use for that well uh, she has she's... they haven't officially like came out as saying that she's hundred percent lesbian she's uh, just but gay. they're just kind of like avoiding putting those yeah. labels because also it's the 80s so like yeah you know mm-hmm. same with will who is very I don't wanna, much yeah. not yes a, a straight character has a crush on mike yeah. yeah yeah uh um <clears throat> but she looks she looks so familiar and I could not figure it out. I looked her up. We looked her up separately, yeah. which is really funny because I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's so familiar. She is the daughter of Uma Thurman from Pulp Fiction and Kill Bill, like various uh, and movies. Ethan Hawke. And Ethan Hawke, who just played Haro in Moon- the Moon Knight series. He was the bad guy in the Moon Knight series. That we just talked about, but like, uh, not even uh, like weeks ago. Yeah, uh, and that's their so daughter, different. and she looks like both of them. <laughs> like, it, she looks. At, I looked at a picture of her and Uma Thurman, and I was like, "Oh my god, she looks exactly like her mom." And then, like two days later, I found out that Ethan Hawke was her dad, and I was like, "What?" And I looked it up, and there was a picture of them side by side, and I was like, "Oh my god, she looks just like her dad." Like, that's how. I mean. Not to sound condescending, that's how genetics work. But, yeah. like, it's scary how when you look her and her mom side by side, you're like, wow, they look yeah. so much alike. And exactly then you look alike. her and her dad side by side, and you're like, wow, exactly they look alike. so much alike. Yeah. She like, actually she even looks like the perfect like, blend yeah, of it her is parents. Fucking crazy. Yeah. I should have known because her last name is Hawk. Right. But yeah. That was the thing. I was like, oh, Ethan Hawke. And then I like looked it up. And I was like, and Uma Thurman. And then I looked and I was like, fuck yeah, I can see that. <laughs> like, m- more than you would expect. Like, that's 100% their kid. Uh, but moving she's on. We fanta- got to move on. She's fantastic in the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's hilarious. We got to keep, we got to move. Duh, boys. Duh, boys. Duh, uh, boys. boys. Fucking holy shit. All right. So, where we left it last. Last week, uh, Kimiko, Kimiko got is blasted by Soldier Boy. Fucked up. She got. She ain't Azanga. healing no more. Yeah. She ain't healing no more, and that leads to a theory yeah. that we expressed last week. That you last expressed. Week? Don't don't lull me into you being wrong. 
I was like kind of right. And right. You didn't have any you, theories. So... I didn't. Uh, Shut I, up. I just thought that it was. Shut up. He was more powerful, and that's why she wasn't healing. I thought, I thought so. I thought originally that Soldier Boy took Kimiko's power because there, after he hits her with the nuclear blast out of his chest, it they do show him like standing there, like you know, and it looks like he's kind of absorbing. But I think what actually is happening is that because of the nuclear like blast that comes out of him. He's canceling out because V20 or not even V24. Sorry, uh, compound the, V. Compound V is a drug that these that the soups have been given since they were kids. Uh, I think now, or we think now, because we're on the same page now. Yeah, that he is able to cancel out because the of the radiation compound. that he produced. Can't yeah, he cancels the drug out of their system. Which is why Kimiko wasn't healing, and this is why he would be a weapon to take out a Homelander, is because he could kill the drug in his system and just make him a man. Yeah, and then and, he could get fucked up. Yeah, and I mean that's also the reason, Theoretically. like the the radiation burning it out of his out of their systems uh, makes sense because that's a way that they track Soldier Boy once they find out that he made it back mm-hmm. to the States, which happens yeah. in this episode. Yeah, so killed that they a bunch use, of people. They like, use, like, Geiger counters because he yeah. puts off a radioactive signal. So they mm-hmm. have an idea as to where he's heading and have a Geiger counter, and as he gets close, it starts to, like, read, you know, there's radioactive material nearby. Mm. Uh... But back to back to Kimiko, the girl, the female, whatever you want to yeah. call her, because yeah. uh, she's known by multiple names at this point in time through the comics, mm-hmm. the show. Um, she's actually very happy that she's not healing. Well, yeah, because she's been, I mean, this whole season, she's like, I never got to experience this. This is a curse. Why would yeah. you want even this? that interaction oh, yeah. with her and Ryan, which is Homelander and Butcher's late wife's mm. child, when they're talking about having powers, she's like, "Yeah, this is a curse. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't want this. It it's happened terrible. To me, yeah. So when she can't lift anything that's super heavy because she's oh, yeah. hurt." She's yeah. like, hand me that, and, and she like hands her something, and petite. she's like, oh. yeah. yeah, And That's she's dope. smiling, she's happy, and then yeah. she, we saw it even in the first episode where, you know, she, th- like, imagines herself singing along to the music, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but we get a full blown musical number, which yeah, it happens just... in almost every, it happens oh. in like every sitcom. It's so annoying. Stop it. But what's Stop. cool about this, I agree. Like, don't add musical numbers just for the sake of, like, following a trend. But what is cool is that it is uh, Karen Her voice. Uh, Fukuhara that is yeah. singing, which who plays she's, Kimiko. Yeah. She's got a beautiful voice. Yeah, yeah. it's so good. Because I had to look it up because... Obviously, when you're watching it like happen on screen, you're like, "Oh, it looks like she's lip syncing." Mm-hmm. But I was like, "But she's like, it's shown her singing in more than one episode now. Like, is this real?" Mm-hmm. So I had to look it up, and it is actually her singing. Yeah, it's just obviously it's pre-tracked for audio reasons. Yeah. But we also get our second uh, Seth Rogen cameo, who is a uh, uh, wait. This big, is our uh, second one. Second, yeah, he was in the first season. Oh, it's been so long. I guess yeah. I fucking missed yeah, yeah, yeah. it. This is our second Seth Rogen cameo, and uh, it's a little weird. A little uh, weird. He's a fucking perv. <laughs> he's well. He's jerking off to um, Soldier the Boy's Crimson Soldier Dynamo. Boy, tell him. Yeah, uh, Crim- Boy's, uh, Crimson she, something. Uh, she's basically got like a OnlyFans yeah. page. So we see, uh, like, Seth Rogen just being kind of creepy, just, like, following her 
with well, he's like butt naked and like whacking up oh uh, yeah like yeah. just full on just jerking it and like she has like toys out she has some anal beads that she's yeah. heating up over a candle she's yeah. like ooh let me warm these up before I put them in and he's like oh yeah drop that spandex <laughs> Yeah. We even see him, like, pump lotion. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's very much like a webcam. Yeah. And it's... It's, this, uh, it's not... I have to, I have to, I have to bring this up. Because Seth Rogen is in this movie with Charlize Theron. Theron? Theron. 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 Charlize Theron. And, uh... Charlie Theron. I don't know. <laughs> it's... She, I've heard her name she, like a thousand times. She plays times. like a... Politician. Politician of some sort. And they know each other from when they were kids and they start dating. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. Best word. Uh, they start dating and he jerks off to her. Um, one of her like, campaign videos. And somebody hacks his computer. <laughs> and it's literally the same scene. He's literally in front of his laptop like jerking off. The only difference is in um, the, lo- <laughs> the, mo- the movie's called The Long Shot. Uh, he jizzes on his own face by accident. And everybody that knows her and knows him as her like boyfriend starts calling him the cum guy. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, look, there's the cum guy. So in uh, in um, The Boys, the boys. I'm, I'm just going to call him the cum guy from now on. So. Yeah, it's literally just like a cameo, but like, yeah. if you know, you you know because he's an executive producer. He like helped get this show off the ground because he yeah. loved the comics. Fucking hilarious, mm-hmm. but his cameos are always like, gratuitous. Uh, let's see what else happened. Uh, Frenchie gets kidnapped. He does because uh, basically Butcher sets them up the last episode, kind of like what we talked about, uh, with Nina, who Frenchie Mm -hmm. and Butcher used to work for, uh, to do a job so that they can go and find Soldier Boy. Mm -hmm. But Tell them. uh, (laughs) It's still funny. It's still funny. <laughs> so, so Nina, Nina comes to Frenchie and was like, "Hey, yeah, you you still work for me. You have to to kill these people. You have until the end of the day." Mm. And he just ignores it. He's like, "I'm not gonna do it." Mm. And there's actually a very sweet moment between him and Kimiko. Mm. Like they kiss. They, they, they kiss. finally kiss. Yeah, there's been a lot of tension between that, and they finally kiss and he's he doesn't know how to process it he's like yeah i'm gonna go to a snack you want a snack and then and she smiles about it like she's like yeah. yes yeah it like did. she's she's yeah. happy yeah it's and the, then they one ruin of the, it by the few times it. that we actually see her happy as well mm-hmm. just like with circumstances especially because she's in a hospital mm-hmm. but he gets kidnapped uh, which is unfortunate, but we'll see where that goes in the, the future yeah. episodes because that's kind of where his story ends. But we see uh, Butcher <laughs> getting more temporary V from Maeve. Oh, yeah. Maeve. They fuck. They they do. They, who, do you, they who do you think the... Who's the most attractive female on the show for you? Oh, man. Uh, Kimiko. Ah, dang. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> She's cute. Yeah. But uh, Maeve and Butcher hook up. Uh, we also... He booked her. Some... He booked her hard. Oi. oi. Yeah. Fucked her He's hard, like, mate. He's like, oi. Yeah. Show me your, show me your cunt. And then he. Oh it. man! <laughs> oh, that what? happened. That wasn't bad. Yeah. No. He's Australian. Okay. That's fine. Is he Australian? I don't know what he is. 
Yeah, he's <laughs> he's from the Commonwealth, if you will. Mm. He's Australian, <laughs> Indian, the, or New Zealander. The Commonwealth. Moving on. Uh, he do you gets... think they? Do you think they use the condom? I don't think they use the condom. I. You want to go there right now? <laughs> we can debate this because it does not show it, but it's anyways. So we're, I'm just being weird because yeah, I want to be. You, I'm yeah. tr- I'm literally trying to make this awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Mission successful. Um, uh, that's what he said after he finished. But he gets more temp V, uh, V24. I'm just trying, man. I'm, I'm, I fucking can't. Uh, we, I, yeah. wa- I was wrong about Huey uh, with his temp V powers. It's not, he doesn't become like uh, Ant-Man or the Tick as they show, or as they mentioned he earlier in the show. He actually teleports. He just can't bring right, his clothes with right him. Right out of his britches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Huey does take more compound feet in this and it, episode. It creates problems with Starlight. Eh, whatever. But we'll see. But we also get to see uh, Soldier Boy goes and kills the oh. Crimson... Uh, <laughs> the Crimson girlfriend. Uh, burns her to a crisp. Yep. And uh, Butcher's like... Hey, we're the ones that freed you from Russia. Oh yeah. Oh, and butchered drugs. Uh, uh, MM M- Marvin. M-M. Yeah. 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 Mother's milk is what MM stands for. Yeah. He, I don't know he why. He drugged him. But because he's huge. Yeah, but mother's milk. Just I don't know. Do you grow big up, mom milk? I don't know. Booby milk. I don't. I, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Uh, um. But <laughs> what are you laughing about? Could you? Just, I, we're both just like I. I thought I knew the answer. I'm like, oh, it's because this. And we're both just like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, that all happens. <laughs> uh, drugs, mm, uh, because he hates Soldier Boy because he killed his dad and like but his they, family. But the boys need Soldier Boy. Yeah, and mm to... wants to fucking kill Soldier Boy, M-M. which yeah. I don't think how he would. Because uh, MM refuses to take temp, uh, the temp V or V twenty four. V twenty four. They, they kind of refer to it as both. Uh, yeah. In these but past they do, couple episodes. But, but. They, there's like a scene towards the, at the end, basically where Starlight's like, "Hey, man," to Huey, and she's like, don't, "You gotta stop." Yeah. Don't. You, gotta, you come with me. Don't go with, with Butcher. Me. Yeah, and Butcher's like, "Oi, Huey." Yeah. Cunt. <laughs> Oi, cunt. He, he didn't call him a cunt, but he's like, Oi, he Huey. And Huey's like, you know, I know you don't want me to do this, but I have to save you from Homelander. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm going to do, whether you want me to or not. And he goes with Butcher. So, yeah. and that's and that's where we left with the boys. Uh, we, skip, show, we, so good. we skipped a lot, but yeah, we're already. What are, what's that time at right now? Uh, enough. Uh, <laughs> like an hour and a half? Yeah, hour and 15. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I mean, there's... With some, editing, there's, it'll... Yeah, come well, down. yeah. But we still have to close this out. Um, <laughs> but there is some shit with Maeve that we skipped over. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're but, not going to get but, into it, but... Um, gets, she gets kidnapped or headbutted by... Uh, or dead. Uh, by I don't think she's dead. She gets uh, headbutted by Black um, Noir. Black Noir, yeah. And uh, but Homelander, Homelander is behind it. Yeah. Oh yeah, cut that shit. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Oi. Cut. Oi. Uh, but yeah, I mean, with oh fuck, with that being said, Jake. Cheers, mate. Mm. Mm. Uh, we are going to go ahead and close out this episode. But before we do, we are going to close out this episode. Um, 
as always, go check out our. It's not page. Is it still Patreon? Yeah, we still have our Patreon page. It's okay. I believe it's patreon.com slash all things nerd podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to support us, it's a great way to give monthly and get uh, exclusive merch, exclusive uh, like colors for the t-shirt uh larger stickers uh, as well as uh once we get a few more people uh on there we'll do like a, a group me or like uh you know some sort of uh group chat where you get behind the scenes uh mm-hmm. access to talk to us regularly also we have our new website uh, it's just allthingsnerdpodcast.com. Uh, but it has our new web store on there. We're still in the process of transferring over some merch. Yeah. But it, I mean, if you like our our exclusive, like, Pride Month, uh, every few months we're also going to be picking a new uh, charity to donate to. So if you... Mm-hmm. Don't even want merch, but you want to support the stuff that we support. Well, that's a great way to do it. Uh, that's all there. But what what's coming up, Jake? Uh, July second, the day our buttholes will never be the same. Uh, I'm sure July third will be the day our buttholes <laughs> will never be the same. We invested for some reason in the hot ones hot ones challenge, and we bought all of the. Hot sauce from the season sixteen Hot Ones uh YouTube channel. Um but there's still more. Yeah, the that one, from that first little, we feast. That, that was a little scary. Yeah. There's a few <laughs> um, of them that are scary. Yeah, so uh July second we are going to be uh eating some vegan wings um with all of these hot sauces and burning our mouths and later our buttholes with these hot sauces. Um, I, we're going to have some, we're going to have to do like probably in my garage, honestly, because, uh, my girlfriend is going to join us for that one. Uh, I believe her brother is joining us for that as well. Uh, you and myself. Um, yeah, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. But if and you we'll, fo- if you follow us on stream. if you're gonna follow us on Facebook or Instagram, uh, we'll be posting to both of those because uh, we're oh. gonna be doing at least thirteen, maybe fourteen, because uh, there's or there's ten, right? There's, there's 10, ten of them. But so we're gonna 11, add Crybaby eleven or Craig's twelve, stuff. I guess. Yeah. Uh, we'll for sure add Crybaby Craig's to the mix. And then my. And then my uncle also makes a hot sauce uh, called homemade uh, hot De- sauce. Deo's Daring Sauce. And uh, so it's gonna... spicy, man. It's spicy. It's... Yeah, it's a weary, weary pepper. It's from yeah. Diana. It's very, very hot. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do one of those as well. I don't know where to place those on the scale of whatever, we, but. We might. Uh, dairy Dairy, probably like fourth or fifth. Uh, what would you call it? Uh, the, the weary, weary pepper that. Dairy. Oh, dairy. I thought you said dairy, dairy. I did, <laughs> but I, I combined the two. Uh, that'll be somewhere in the middle. The crab yeah, baby Craig's okay. is delicious, but it's a very mild hot sauce. Yeah, so that'll be. Sauce. We'll probably do that one first, just mm. to to kick it all off. But if you follow mm. us on Facebook or Instagram, and there's questions that you want to ask us about anything. Uh, fan castings, theories, just general questions for us as po- podcast hosts. Yeah. Uh, ants, like, reply to those, ask us questions. We're going to take the first uh, 12 questions that don't overlap. Yeah. One and, for each bottle, yeah, we'll, th- we'll take as many questions. Yeah, so we'll yeah. do that, and we'll do it live, and we'll also answer questions, like, in between. But that's kind of, we're going to try and do it as true to the Hot Ones Challenge as possible, where we're answering questions about stuff. Hashtag Sean Evans. <laughs> Hopefully he sees it. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we love you guys again. Uh, thanks for letting us do what we do. For and 69 full weeks. Did you pour your thing? Mm-hmm. I didn't pour mine. 
Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, well, you go. We we love you guys, and thank you for letting us do what we do. Can't wait to see more of you, and this has been the All Things Nerd Podcast. Bam.